Now, in terms of other signals beyond light, stimuli, or dark, uh, feeding appears to be one of the most dominant um, timing cues uh, in terms of um, establishing rhythms in these uh, in the peripheral clocks and kind of acting as uh, as a, an important control mechanism. So, if you think about say people that do shift work, for instance, they may be working at, uh, during the night, they may be asleep during the day, kind of flip flop from from what our our biology is trained to. These individuals, there's evidence that they have um, a dysregulation in their metabolism, and actually they're more, more prone to a, uh, getting metabolic syndrome. So they're kind of consuming energy outside of what a normal, excuse me, a normal feeding phase would be. And um, particularly late night eating in humans, I mean, right before you go to bed or right before you sleep, seems to be uh, one of the one of the major one of the major cues that kind of throws things out of whack. Just kind of putting it simplistically. What would you Look, consider late? Well, it depends on right? when you're going to bed. Like if I'm going to bed at ten o'clock. You know, eating eating a large meal at nine, that is, <laughs> that's not setting you up. Um, that's not giving you the optimal signal, right? You're going to, you're going to be digesting that, particularly depending on the nutrients that you're consuming, you know, for, for many, many hours, perhaps, you know, into, uh, into the morning close to when you're actually, you're actually going to be getting up. So, I mean, there's, there's some individuals, depending on the amount, the, the amount of energy that they're consuming, you know, their entire 24 hour period could be in a postprandial state, meaning they're constantly digesting and, and having um, fats and, um, or lipids and glucose uh, in, in their bloodstream. So, I mean, all those markers are constantly elevated. Um, that's, that would not be a good scenario. Now, in terms of looking at, over a, a 24 hour period, seeing when um, you can actually impact, you know, metabolism, insulin sensitivity, uh, decreases uh, throughout the day and into the night. So it's actually highest uh, in the morning. So insulin uh, is is important in many ways beyond just shuttling you know nutrients into the cell. It actually can also impede the action of growth hormone, which occurs at a pulsile um, concentration throughout the night. So that in that in that scenario I just gave you, that would be that would be bad if you were looking to maximize growth hormone output because you're basically suppressing that signal if you're having high levels of, of um, glucose in your bloodstream and obviously parallel to that insulin uh, throughout the night. Meals consumed at night uh, are associated with obviously greater postprandial glucose and insulin. And this is really exaggerated in, in obese individuals. And you know even in healthy individuals, um, when we run these types of studies, like a, a normal, and I know body mass index is a contentious contentious metric for a lot of people because it doesn't accurately take into account lean body mass, but when you take normal BMI individuals and feed them very, very late, these high fat, high carbohydrate meals, uh, it actually increases not just glucose and insulin, but another important marker, which is glycosylated hemoglobin. So basically sugar sticking to blood cells. This is measured, most people know this as uh, HB, uh, A1C, glycosylated uh, hemoglobin. And this, when you have this elevated for long time, for long periods of time, is a good indication uh, of your risk in actually diagnosing type 2 diabetes. Hmm. So, and this is, about, I mean, a lot of people eat sweets at night. So that's a pretty common thing for people to have, like, you know, a dessert in the evening, typically. Um, and, and so that you're associating, I mean, if they have a substantial amount before bed, with the decreased ability to create growth factor and then the, these other subsequent issues that you're talking about right now. Absolutely. Uh, and also, it, it depends on the overall energy intake that you're taking in. If you're hypercaloric, meaning that you're in a surplus and you're consuming it with, say, other types of, uh, like fats, for instance, that reaction can actually be even more exaggerated, particularly with um, producing uh, greater levels of, of insulin.